Hey guys, this is Steve Disher from ISP Supplies and uh, we got some shaky cam video for you today to show you two new products from TP-Link and these products are part of a new product line that they're calling their CAP product line and it all kind of centers around this AC50 controller which is their enterprise class uh, access point controller and then uh, currently we have uh, one access point that's available within the CAP line. It is the CAP 1750, which is a dual band ceiling mount access point. So let's get to it. Uh, I'll start with the AC50 wireless controller. And we open up the box. Of course you have uh, the normal installation guide that uh, yeah, don't need that. Uh, don't need any warnings. and. Uh, who cares about licensing so we'll throw that aside of course you have a standard AC power cord and here's the little device itself so trying to work uh, one-handed here operating the camera and ripping the packages open so all right so this is what the controller looks like the form factor of the case itself is a lot like uh, the smaller 8 port TP link switches and uh, in the front we have uh, a panel showing uh, I guess activity and link lights and then uh, of course on the back we have some places to co connect some devices so uh, that's what you get in the box with the AC50 controller in a moment we'll fire this guy up and uh, see what the uh, web interface looks like here is the 1750 the CAP 1750 which is the dual band gigabit ceiling mount access point that goes with this controller it's important to note that the controller is not compatible with uh, the EAP line so this is one of the EAP access points uh, which have been around for a while and we've deployed a ton of these with uh, some great success the uh, EAP line has its own controller which is a software based controller currently there is no hardware controller for the EAP line and so just keep that uh, straight that it is a totally separate line the EAP I do understand that there's a hardware controller coming for the EAP but we currently don't have that so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the 1750 to see what's in that box of course we have the ceiling mount access point uh, it does use a twist lock system to lock it up to the ceiling you also get a clip this clip is what you would use to mount to one of these rails on a suspended ceiling you simply uh, clip the mount onto the rail and then there's four holes in the face of the clip and into those holes you're going to attach this piece here one thing they do for you I like is they put an outline of the AP on here so when you're placing this thing up on the ceiling you can understand what the orientation of the AP is going to be because it only locks in in one orientation also in the box we have a power adapter to me a fairly useless thing because we're almost always going to power these guys with PoE you also have some screws in case uh, you want to mount this mount to uh, another type of, uh, of surface as well as some anchors you can use to attach the thing uh, this is what the business side of the access point looks like again you see that power jack there which uh, I don't typically think has a lot of value because we're going to almost always power these guys with PoE alright so that's it on the unboxing for these two devices we're going to stop the video for a moment, get everything hooked up uh, in our lab, and then we'll log in and begin some configuration. So here's my lab setup. Not the most elegant thing in the world, but we have a bit of a shortage of furniture here in our Colorado office. And uh, all the furniture and desks are in use, so uh, I used a couple of boxes for my lab table. Now, uh, what we have hooked up here is the AC50, and we're using Ethernet ports uh, 1 and 2 on the back. We have the AC power cable hooked up to it. The uh, blue Cat5 wire runs to a jack on the wall to get into our network here. And then our access point here, we have connected with the yellow cable, and <clears throat> that goes into the back of the AC50, and we have it in 
support Ethernet too. So the first thing that we have to do in order to log into the AC50 is to set a static IP address on our laptop. In this case, uh, the static IP that they suggest is 192.168.0.100 with a slash 24 subnet mask, which I have here, and you don't need a default gateway or a DNS server for logging into the device. So I will hit OK. And now I should be able to type in the IP address of the AC50, which is 192.168.0.253, and we should get a login box, which we do. Now, I've previously logged into this device, and so it already has a username and password on it. If this were the first time, the box that you see here would be a little bit different. It would ask you to enter a username as well as a password for the device before you can even uh, get in and configure it. So I will go ahead and add the information that, that I put in previously, and I'll hit login. All right, so I'm logged into the AC50 now. This is the status screen, which is the first one that shows up. It's always a good idea to upgrade the firmware on any network device, especially one like this is fairly new to the market. That ensures that you have the least amount of problems as you begin to configure and deploy. I've already downloaded the firmware upgrade file and it's here on my desktop in a zip file. So I will go ahead and drag that firmware file out of the uh, zip folder here and extract it onto my desktop. Now I want to do the upgrade, so I'm going to go to System Tools and Administration, Firmware Upgrade, and here I will browse to my desktop and find that file. And now I click the Upgrade button and it asks me if I'm sure and I say yes. So I'm going to pause here while the firmware upgrade is being up uploaded. So our device has upgraded, rebooted, and we are now back at the login screen. So we're going to enter the username and password that we created previously, and we log into the device. All right, so this is the status screen. It's going to show us things like the hardware version, firmware version, system time, and that type of thing. So we're going to go through this uh, in the most expeditious manner possible, simply to get you up and going with one wireless access point, one CAP. So we're not going to look at every single function and, and every single capability, but just look at the basics of what you need to set up a wireless network. The first thing you likely want to do is to go over to the status section and click AP status. And this is going to show us any access points that have found our controller on the layer two network and these are available for us to be able to configure. All right, so we see one wireless AP here. The CAP1750 is the model number as well as its MAC address and that type of thing. So, so far so good. Everything seems to be working correctly. Next, we're going to want to create our wireless SSID, which is the name of our wireless network. So to do that, we're going to go down to the uh, wireless button so under wireless, we're going to click this button here that says add, and we're going to type in the SSID that we want to configure. In this case, I'll call it uh, CAP test, and we of course want some type of security. We're going to use WPA2 security. So now we've selected WPA PSK or WPA2 PSK, if we want, we can lock things down a little bit more and say only use WPA2 PSK, and then we need to put in the pre-shared key or password. So I have that in, I'm going to hit OK, and now we've created our wireless network. Obviously, you can create multiple wireless networks, multiple SSIDs, but again, we're keeping this example simple. The next thing you want to do is to bind this SSID and WPA2 security profile to one of the APs on your network. In this case, we only have one AP, so when we click binding, we'll only show one AP. We do see two different radios on this one AP because it is a dual band radio. So we will select both of those radios as being bound to our particular SSID. 
Then the final step here is to click Bound. At this point, both radios on our CAP1750 are bound to the new wireless network we created for them. Finally, the last step is to save our configuration. So I'll click Save Config. It confirms that I want to save it and it will uh, go through the saving process. So we've completed the configuration of our CAP and now we probably want to see if this actually works. So I switched over to my Mac and in the upper right hand corner I see the place that I can connect to wireless networks and of course we see here the CAP-test SSID we just created. So I will click on that and it should ask me for the wireless password. I'll type that in and hit join and it'll think about it for a moment and now we're connected to the CAP test network. So if you want to review the steps we just went through in this tutorial, you can go to tp-link.com slash us slash faq-1334.html. You can see it uh, here highlighted in my browser. And this will give you the same steps we just went through to set up the wireless network. I hope you uh, enjoyed the unboxing video for the new AC50 controller as well as the CAP access point. There's more access points coming in this particular family. They'll be quite easy to deploy using this controller and it will allow you to create a very stable network up to 50 access points per controller. That's it for today. Check out our blog. It's blog.ispsupplies.com and we'll have more information there as well as our YouTube channel, uh, ispsupplies.com as well for the YouTube and we hope you have a great day.